We're back to this weekend's big Hall of Fame vote as Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens move from the writer's ballot to their first shot on the newest version of the Veterans Committee. Also among the eight on this ballot, a player with no ties or suspicion of using performance enhancers, but whose career was overshadowed by those who did. And it's a chance to right a wrong. We once again give some Cooperstown justice to Fred McGriff. I'll get right to it. Fred McGriff, when he was playing, when it was happening, was a big star. The 80s and 90s weren't the Barry Bonds show with Fred McGriff as a sideline player. McGriff was every bit the hitter Bonds was when they were both in their prime, and McGriff was the much better postseason performer. I'll show you that. McGriff finished in the top five in OPS and home runs seven straight years. Top five. He was dominant, a slugging first baseman, and before things got skewed by steroids and the testosterone revolution, McGriff and and Bonds were very close in production. I'm going to show you the average season for Fred McGriff through his age 38 season up against the average season for Barry Bonds before he hit the fountain of youth and became a monster. This isn't a small sample here. This is 15 full years of Fred McGriff. 15 years, his first 15 full seasons against 14 years of Barry Bonds before he became a very different human. Look at the batting average. All right, 288, 288, the same. 380 on base, 514 slugging for Barry, 410 and 559. So Barry's is a bit higher, but McGriff plays more year by year. His average, 31 homers, 97 RBIs. For Bonds, 32 homers, 93 RBIs. Total bases, that's TB. 277 for McGriff, 278 for Bonds. Essentially the same. This is the prime of Barry Bonds through age 34, 1999. Barry walked more. There you go, 102 to 80. Yes, the total production, though, very similar. This is before Bonds took a huge leap at the age of 35. That doesn't happen naturally. McGriff aged very well, had longevity, and was every bit the hitter Bonds was before Bonds got on the program and became Babe Ruth at the age of 35. Now, Barry was a better outfielder. He's played outfield, better fielder. Stole bases. He was a better all-around player, but not by much. And here's something for those of you too young to remember. In the postseason, Bonds was a dud. McGriff was a stud. I'm sorry to be so blunt, but I'm tired of hearing about the great Bonds while McGriff is forgotten. McGriff was traded to the Braves in 1993. He was a beast down the stretch, had 55 RBIs in 68 games, led Atlanta to a division title, beating out Barry Bonds and the Giants by one game. Head-to-head -head beat out Bonds and the Giants, and then he slugged 700 in the National League Championship Series. In 1994, he slugged a career high, but the strike wiped out everybody's postseason. In 1995, McGriff's playoff performance was legendary. He had a 415 on base, slugged over 600 in all three playoff rounds. He led Atlanta to its first ever World Series championship. The Braves, with all that Hall of Fame pitching, they do not win the World Series without a standout Fred McGriff. I hope I'm making myself clear on this. McGriff was a flat-out winner, completely delivering for three straight years after that blockbuster trade. Here's McGriff in the playoffs versus Barry Bonds. Head to head. This is through 1997 when Bonds was, we believe, clean. McGriff hit 303, Bonds hit 200. McGriff had a 385 on base, Bonds was at 323. McGriff slugged 532, Bonds slugged 288. McGriff had more chances, double the plate appearances, but McGriff didn't fail in the postseason. Bonds had real issues, at least before he was on the program. I don't mean to be mean to Barry, but I'm just tired of hearing of the greatness of Bonds, the home run king, while McGriff stalled at 493. Poor little Fred McGriff and he's relegated as an also ran. If they're both clean in their prime and you go into the playoffs, you would take Fred McGriff over Barry Bonds. If you were there, you would know that, and the voters on that committee should know that full well.